What makes a house a home? We've been searching the country for Scotland's home of the year. Now our judges are visiting the top three from each region before choosing one to go through to our national final, scoring them on architectural merit, distinctive design and personal style are interior designer Anna Campbell-Jones. What I'm looking for in a home is individuality, imagination and integrity, and of course that most important ingredient, love. Architect Danny Campbell. What I'm looking for in a home is an inventive use of space with a deep connection to its site, delivered with such originality that I can't help but feel inspired. And Isle of Mull-based interior designer Banjo Beal. I'm looking for homes that are packed full of character, packed full of personality and something that tells me about the characters that live there. This is a really special room. Proper country kitchen for crafty country people. I think I'm going to feel right at home here. In the end, only one can be Scotland's Home of the Year. Our judges are visiting the shortlist in the Highlands and Islands, and they're starting with a historic fishing lodge that dates back to the 18th century. Earth House near Abbeymore is home to Salim and Diane. It was raining, a classic Scottish raining night when we got here, and uh, it was kind of scary, actually, to be honest. <laughs> and I, we went in, the house was quite dilapidated. There was not a functioning kitchen. There was not functioning bathrooms. There was water pouring through it, mushrooms growing out. I just ran out of the house saying, no, no, absolutely not. And he ran out of the house saying, oh, it's perfect. <laughs> I just felt like it was sad and it just kind of needed to be recovered. It's the place, you know, it's just a beautiful spot in the world right by the river. I loved putting it back together, you know. Um, I loved just the process of building it. Salim yeah. is the genius behind this whole house. Home to me is a sense of belonging. I mean, I was abandoned as a baby at a Salvation Army hospital. It's more a sense of belonging and it's more a sense of love. Combined, we have six children and we have five grandchildren. So <laughs> it is a busy house, yes. Which, to be honest, is what the house wants. You know, the house wants laughter of children and it's just a beautiful thing. On the ground floor, there's a living room, drawing room, dining room, kitchen, ensuite bedroom with office, a conservatory and two bathrooms. Upstairs, there are seven bedrooms, all with en suites. This is my favorite spot in the home because I sit here and watch nature and love to watch the birds go in and out. Armed with only the basic facts about the property, the judges now get their first look at Earth House. Ooh. <laughs> it's a Highland sanctuary. It's absolutely Stunning. This central tower in the middle is really unusual, isn't it? The cladding and timber. I can't wait to get inside that turret. Oh, check out that conservatory. That looks magic. I wonder what's inside there. Shall we go see? Let's go. What? Wait, sorry, what? Wow. <laughs> Rockstar. It's Rockstar, isn't it? It's crazy, it's monastic, it's monotone, it's so sparsely decorated, but all of those pieces are just classy. You would not expect such an industrial partition to be splitting up this grand entrance of a, an older house. I don't think we're cool enough to be invited into this house. Should we go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is, oh, this is so, so plush for a Highland setting. I feel like I'm in LA. I've actually done something similar before with an original fireplace and then pushed it through to create a fireplace in the next room. And through there, I can see that that's that conservatory you spotted from the outside. Normally, I'm not a fan of multiple doors coming into the same space, but we've got the volume in here that it really works. This is clearly a really social zone. The way these objects are arranged on the mantelpiece, it's a masterclass in styling. I do not know what I'm looking at, but I'm loving it. I mean, I just want to meet these people. Oh. 
Oh, the heart. I mean, no wonder it's so connected with the outside this room, isn't it? You feel at one with nature and yourself. What is that? These are Tibetan singing bowls. Ooh. I love the way they've left this concrete slab exposed and painted it so it ties in with the windows as well. It really zones this area. Oh, look at the detail on that timber, that really cool Aztec kind of dovetail join. Look at all these bottles and jars. Oh, here we go. Ancient apple and pink poppy. Anti-aging, youthful life. There we go. Oh, and we'll get ourselves some of that. Oh, I'm just going to douse myself in that stuff. They're distilling all of their own kind of oils and remedies. This is the light arts. This is dark arts. This kitchen? This is incredible. That skirting with the lighting underneath. I love this floor. It looks like a reclaimed kind of herringbone parquet. That is nice. Just look at that shelf. My mind is blown. Those beautiful vessels. I love that little corner there where you can see the stone of the old building and the wood is just artfully arranged there with that timber frame. That is beautiful. This could feel really austere and show homey and like a gallery, but it really feels like a home. You can feel it. And that's quite extraordinary for a space like this. It's really special. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, it's <laughs> your very <laughs> own shower turret. Every home should have one. This is like a really cool version of what we've got at the rugby club. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lovely main bedroom. It's interesting that they've chosen a room that's smaller in such a big home. The ceiling's coming in as well. It's like hugging the space. The view of the spay right there perfectly lined up with the bed. That is the money shot. That is so lovely. Most of the bedrooms have got en suites, so I bet there's another one through there. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> oh, oh, wow! Look at that ceiling. This is wild. Oh, I'm having a moment. I need to sit too. Oh. It's really cool that the basin is actually just a mini version of this bath. There's angles, there's a view and loads of natural light. They've absolutely maximised the opportunity in this space. I feel like I'm up in the trees. I've almost got vertigo standing here looking down. Imagine starting every day in here. You wouldn't have a bad day. How will the judges rate Earth House? One mark will be held back until they've seen all three homes when their combined scores will be revealed. It might seem strange to say this about this exquisitely sprawling home, but the first adjectives that come to mind are humble and generous. This is not a look at me home. This is something much deeper. It feels like it is in itself a benign entity. I'm gonna give this home a 10. I've been totally blown away by this home. From the moment we came to the door, our preconceptions of what to expect next were being challenged. There's been a real playfulness in how the arrangement's been put together. I really feel that these homeowners see themselves as custodians of this old building, and that comes through in the quality of the design inside. I'm going to give this home a 10. I think it takes vision and restraint to create a home this warm and wonderful. It is truly a masterclass in design and making a home that reflects everything you believe in. There's something really remarkable about this home. Can't pinpoint what it is, but it's something really special and personal, and that makes this home magical. Next in line for the judges is a modern self-build near Stornoway in the Isle of Lewis. 
Achnagairn House is home to Alison, David, their daughters Eva Grace and Eva Rose, and Chihuahua Mulberry. I drew a house on a piece of paper and I wanted the house to be symmetrical. For whatever reason, I thought symmetry is beautiful and you made it into a home. So we wanted to make a big house for the kids. So we keep saying, like, it's not really our house, no. it's their house. There's big spaces here for them to do their dance and the hall's so long, so they can go up and down in their scooters. It's, it's for you know, them. The, the Great Hebridean weather, you can't get outside oh. most of the time. When we actually were due to move into the house, it was coming up to our seventh year anniversary, mm -hmm. and that sort of theme is copper. And I think the only thing that I was desperate to have was that copper Belfast sink. Yeah. We wanted to be as green as possible, so we put solar panels onto the roof. We also used a mechanical heat ventilation recovery system. We built the panels with much thicker insulation that was necessary. It's much cheaper to run, it's better for the environment. I think we built this house yeah. with no experience. We had no, you know, great skills. We can do it. If Absolutely. we can do it, anyone Absolutely. can do anyone it. can do it. The property is all on one level and features an open plan kitchen, dining and living space with separate shower room and utility. There is a playroom and four bedrooms, one with a walk-in closet and ensuite, and a family bathroom. This is our favourite spot in the home. We love socialising with friends and family and we can really appreciate all the views we have from this spot in the home. But what will the judges think of Achnagairn House? It's a great courtyard, isn't it, with these lights overhanging? The planting's absolutely beautiful. It's very bougie. When you have such an exposed spot, you want a courtyard, don't you, just to hug you and keep you warm? Well. Not warm, <laughs> just not blown away. The house itself is actually really simple. It's almost perfectly symmetrical, and there's only really two colours going on. Yeah, it's got two wings on either side. I wonder what those two spaces are used for. Shall we check it out? Oof, what a warm welcome. It's very cosy in here, isn't it? Super cosy. It's funny to get to a, a dead end like this straight off the door. I'm not sure which way we should go. Yeah, that's why you put a mirror there. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. This colour on the walls is so effective. This beautiful smoky, greeny blue. It reminds me of the sky outside today. And I'm going to make an executive decision that we're going to go down this path. You're like a flight attendant. You've just stepped <laughs> off the runway and now you're directing us. Correct. Oh, wow. Ooh. There's the heart. What an amazing spot. You've got a kind of view all the way around, the sea in the distance and the fields, it's so beautiful. What I like most of all is an east-facing kitchen, so you get all that morning light. And I really love that copper sink there as well. That's kind of a touch of glam in a kind of country kitchen, isn't it? This is nice. Oh, I've got this cute little sofa all to myself. It's all yours, baby. It is quite a restricted colour palette, but they've added so many details. There's so many decorative objects in here, I don't even know where to look first. So I'm noticing this beam, which is obviously artificial because you wouldn't have a beam that looks like that in a newer property, which I think is fine if you're going for that aesthetic, but the one real giveaway for me is the pendants that are hanging straight from it. They've really gone to town on the foliage in here as well, and I bet you that really comes to life in winter when it looks a bit grim outside. You've got bursting to life inside. Oh, is this cute? Yeah. <sighs> Look at that, name and lights. Wow, already? This bed frame is the perfect starting point to make a den. I know my boys would love this. People often paint girls' rooms pink, but I love the way this pink has got a kind of earthiness to it. Wait, she's even got the swords for a proper Highland sword dance. Anyone know how to do the sword dance? Oh, it's been a few years and I've got my Crocs on, but I think it's basically just pants around like this. Is that right? I've just stepped on it. You're a master. <laughs> Mom, and you, and oh, your turn. Thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's like a sword breakdown. <laughs> yeah. That's because I'm so straight. It's a bit hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. 
She is bright. <laughs> It works though, you've got the crisp white linen, the sun streaming in, all of the white furniture. It's angelic, isn't it? It's a lovely contrast to come in here from that dark hallway. I was a bit unsure about the long corridor to get to this space, but the change in height really gives an impact to the main part of the bedroom. Oh, and I see we've got the same type of beam that we had in the living space. Oh, I quite like the beam. It's a nice contrast to the white. I've noticed that they've got the same flooring in nearly every space in the home. It's really high quality oak flooring. It's a lovely way to harmonize the whole home. How will the judges score Achnagairn House? Living on a Hebridean island, light is the most precious commodity and they make the most of it here, I bet, all year round. I live in a new home and my constant battle is trying to make it a little bit more characterful. And I can see with things like the beams, the homeowner is really wanting to do that as well. So I just encourage them to push it that little bit further. I'm going to give this home an eight. This sustainably built home is a little bit like a hug, the way that it wraps around and welcomes you as you come in. It's perfect for the location. I feel like this home needs another space where you can sit and curry in more. I'm gonna give this home an eight. This home sits on a beautiful plot, but I'm sure they see some extreme weather. The homeowners cleverly use some composite materials that are really hard wearing and easy to maintain. The home has been orientated for privacy, but also to make the most of the Eastern light in the morning for the kitchen space. I do wonder though, as the year goes on, whether they could have maybe benefited from a couple of skylights to get that extra bit of light that you need in the winter. The final home in the Highlands and Islands is a converted croft house which dates back to the early 1900s. Newlands Croft House in Lewis is home to Tina and her three Labradors, Millie, Tala and Rhea. I was here with my husband and in his family house, which is very close to here. And we decided to have a look and we came in, we saw the view and we decided that we would like to live here. It was very dilapidated, hadn't been lived in for some time. So we did actually completely gut the old house and re-insulate everything so that we could put in an environmentally friendly heating system. But we retained as much of the characters we could. When I came into the house, what was in front of you was the stairs and the old downstairs toilet. So we then moved the staircase. So when you come to the front door, you can actually see straight through to the sea. Just when we were kind of fully into it, probably about halfway through, my husband was taken ill and um, it was terminal, unfortunately. And um, so I did have to finish it off on my own. So it did take quite a lot longer than it would have done um, normally. My husband loved auctions. And yeah, and I've found various bits and pieces here and there and I've kind of just refurbished them. The chairs here were from an old school. I just wanted us as a family to just have a good place to come and be and be in the place that Norman loved best as well because he was from here and it was a very special place for him. So it, it's a special place for all of us now. The property has been extended to the back and includes a large open plan kitchen, dining and living room with separate utility, pantry and snug. Also on this floor is a bedroom with ensuite, a separate sitting room and a shower room. Upstairs, there are two bedrooms and a bathroom. So this is my favourite spot in the home because this is where I sit and have my tea in the morning and I enjoy the view. And then in the winter, when it's cold, I have the fire on and I turn the chair around and enjoy the fire and it's cosy. Time for the judges to get their first look at Newlands Croft House. Oh, this is interesting. More like windswept and interesting. Well, this is a proper croft house, isn't it? But it's been upgraded with new windows and this really inviting red porch. It's a very quaint house in a very wild setting, isn't it? Let's get inside and have a look.
Oh. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Oh, this is lovely, isn't it? I could live in here. It's very you, actually. It is so me. There's a lot crammed in here. I've got a gorgeous armchair, this beautiful bench, and a really cool light fitting. Oh, that light's a bit of you. Mm-hmm. Mm. A little bit of me and you. What about you, Danny? Where are you? I think I might be through there. Well, there is an extension through there. That's got your name on it. Shall we go? This is absolutely stunning. I'm like looking for the heart because like, <laughs> I feel this is so good. Like if this is not their favorite spot, like what else are they hiding? <laughs> Before we indulge ourselves on this amazing space, can we just acknowledge the open tread in the stairs there? We got a little glimpse of this from the start of the hallway and then we come through and it's just wow. And that build up from the porch all the way through to this incredible panoramic view is superb. I mean, that view is stunning, but it's all about the inside. Everything just feels so lovely and right. I mean, I love those tiles, beams, everything. They've got that gorgeous little nook there. They've reupholstered the chairs in that same fabric. It's all talking to each other. Oh, here's the heart. Oh. oh, this looks perfect. Ooh. What a spot. Oh. It's the perfect place for whale watching, isn't it? You know, I really like that they've not glazed the whole elevation. They've broken it up to create that zoning effect, the same with the furniture. Yeah, I mean, it could feel really cold with all the glazing, but I think with the textures in here, it manages to feel warm and cosy. I can see how all the pieces of furniture work so well together, the mix of contemporary and lovely old vintage finds. I think that's what helps to give it that warmth. I love that they've kept little touches to the old part of the building, like the thickness of the walls. Ooh. Oh, you know, I've never seen these actually used in a home before. These are mirrored tubes that stretch up to the outside and it brings in natural light all the way in. It's a type of skylight. I'm really enjoying this lilac -y pink colour on the walls with the green tiles in the shower area. They're carrying the shapes through, aren't they? They've got the circular mirror, the periscope, skylights. It's all kind of working. Oh, that's a proper cosy croft house bedroom, isn't it? You're just tucked away from the wild weather here in this little croft loft. You get a real sense of the scale of the original part of the croft house. You get a sense of the history here. History and mystery. Tweed throw and a tweed headboard. And this wallpaper with all the dainty spring flowers. It's just perfect. How much tweed is too much tweed? That's my question. Oh, you can never have too much tweed, especially if you live here. That is sacrilege for you even to suggest that. But what will the judges score Newlands Croft House? With a view like that, you could kind of rest on your laurels, but they haven't. They've created an interior that almost trumps the view, which feels impossible, and the home just sings beautifully. If you're gonna live in a wild part of the world like this, you wanna see it, but you wanna feel safe and warm, and you do in this home. You get the best of both worlds. I'm going to give this home a 10. This home has managed to achieve something that's very difficult to obtain. It's created drama and suspense around the biggest opportunity on the site, which is the amazing position and the view. The homeowner's done this by creating subtle little glimpses through into what you're gonna see next, changes in height and natural light in all the right places. I'm going to give this home a 10. I can't think of a more perfect combination of old and new, sheltered and splendid. This has to be the ultimate augmented croft house. There's a palpable harmony to the way this home has been decorated. The combination of contemporary and pre-loved, pattern and texture, practicality and soul.
Now that the judges have seen all three homes, the final scores can be revealed. First, it was Earth House near Aviemore. I gave it a 10. Danny gave it a 10. Banjo, how did it make you feel? Well, it was otherworldly. It was truly magical. The setting, the decor, the entire experience, I felt right at home here. I gave it a 10. Oh my goodness. Wow, full marks. <laughs> That's quite a start. So Earth House gets 30. Ooh, I love it. Next up, Achna Gern House and Lewis. Which Banjo gave an 8 to, and I gave an 8 to Danny. So this is a really beautiful family home. I did feel, though, that they'd limited their opportunities by sticking so rigidly to the symmetry. I give this home a 7. OK, so that gives Achnagern House a very respectable 23. Gorgeous home still. Yeah. And finally, Newlands Croft House also in Lewis. Which Danny gave a 10 to. And Banjo, you also gave it a 10. I thought this home was filled with character and comfort. It respected that traditional home, but augmented it in a way that was just out of this world. So I gave it a 10, which gives Newlands Croft House 30. Dun, dun, dun. Uh -oh. <laughs> now what do we do? <laughs> we bite it out. It's kind of like picking a favorite child. My heart says to go with Earth House because there was something really special about that, that inexplicable feeling of something truly unique. And that's why I kind of think that's, that's our guy. I am totally torn because with the Newlands Croft House, they've just absolutely expertly delivered what an extension can be and how it can bring new life to an older vernacular building and elongate its lifespan. My heart's drawn to Newlands Croft House. I am really, really torn. But the Earth House, it touched me on a kind of visceral, emotional level that I have very rarely experienced. And I know that's not a very logical reason for me to say that that's the one that I think should go through. That's my reason. So, Danny, I know this is really difficult and we probably all would like to put both of these fabulous homes through to the final. Have we persuaded you? So, I think your, your point, Banjo, about there being something inexplicable about Earth House is really relevant. There was something really unique about the Earth House. I think I'm happy to go with Earth House. I would love to see it in the final. OK. Oh, that was stressful. So our finalist for Highlands and Islands is Earth House. Brilliant. What an amazing finalist. Earth House wins in the Highlands and Islands and is one step closer to being Scotland's Home of the Year. Next time... Roll over. <laughs> the judges are in central Scotland. I would never want to work with you. As the search continues for Scotland's Home of the Year.